Welcome to r slash Entitled Parents, where a Karen gets herself banned for life from a water park. Our next Reddit post is from Possible Phil. This happened a couple of years ago, but it still makes me shake my head. I'm a 19-year-old girl, and I had a job working at a water park dispatching rides. Some of the rides require the guests to get a tube at the bottom of the ride and carry it up to the top. Water park employees know that only certain tubes can be used on certain rides. If you use the wrong tube on the wrong ride, then you're asking for people to be injured. The ride I was working had water jets that exploded from the bottom of the ride, so the tubes had to be very durable. Anyway, an entitled mom and her entitled kids are waiting in line. I can see that they grabbed the wrong set of tubes from the bottom of the ride. They have clear tubes, which aren't nearly durable enough for this ride, when they needed reinforced blue tubes. I go over to the mom and explain that she has the wrong tube for this ride. An example of the correct tube is installed right next to the entrance of the ride, so it's pretty clear which tube goes to which ride. I tell her that when she gets to the front of the line, she'll need to step to the side and I can have a worker run down and grab some correct tubes for them. She can still go on the ride, someone just needs to bring her the right tubes. This entitled mother doesn't acknowledge me at all! Anyway, she gets to the front of the line and tries to sit in her tube to go down the ride. I say, ma'am, I'm sorry, but this isn't the correct tube. I've radioed to have someone bring the correct tube up for you and your party, but I can't let you ride down this tube. It's not safe, and you can get hurt. Please stand to the side until your tubes get here. I waited in line. You can't tell me what to do. I'm going down the ride, so get the F out of the way. You cannot go down the ride in this tube. It's not safe. Get the F out of my way, you B-word. Then, the crazy part, she throws her tube at my face. It's bulky and not heavy, so I can easily dodge it, but now I have to call security too. My manager was the person who was carrying the tubes up, and when he heard my call for security, he dropped the tubes and came sprinting up to me. The entitled mother was now destroying the landscaping around the top of the ride and was encouraging her kids to join in. How dare this b-word make us wait! This grunt won't let you on the ride! I'm only 19, and I am not paid enough to put myself in harm's way, so I do nothing to stop her or her kids. She's literally pulling out grass and spitting in my general direction. I picked up the tube she threw at me, and I just sat on the side of the ride. Her entitled kids of course join in, and start spitting in my general direction and ripping up dirt and plants. I was like 10 feet away, so no spit got near me. And that's how the entitled mom and her entitled kids got banned from the park forever. The tubes she needed, which my manager was carrying up, were 10 stairs away from her. They were around a curve so she couldn't see them. Whenever I read stories like this, obviously I laugh at the Karen because that's the point of these stories, but I also feel so bad for these kids. That entitled mother is essentially destroying the future of those kids and they don't even realize it. She's teaching them to be trashy, disgusting human beings, and what hope do they have? Our next Reddit post is from Kelly L. Yellable. When we were growing up, my mom would often stand in front of wherever we were sitting and say, MOVE. This was meant to indicate that she wanted us to move so she could sit where we were sitting. I always found this really disrespectful, and I remember making that argument to my mom when I was a kid. She told me that when I have my own house, I could tell her to move. So, I do. Whenever there's a gathering of people at my home when my mom is there, I make a point of walking up to her where she's sitting and saying, move, so that other people notice. Of course, someone usually comments or asks what I'm doing, and then I'll playfully explain how this was a thing my mom used to do, and that she said that I could do it to her when I bought my own house, so that's what I'm doing. Ha ha ha, isn't that hilarious? Aren't I cheeky? I make a joke out of it, and everyone laughs. But my mom has to wear that fake smile that was constantly plastered on my face growing up whenever my mom decided to insult me around other people and pretend it was a joke. Inside, I know that she's absolutely livid because it's literally the rudest thing that I'm willing to do to another person. <laughs> Meanwhile, me, I have the opposite problem. So our dog, Hugo, is allowed to get up on our master bed, and my wife actually makes fun of me because I never ever pull my dog down off the bed. If he gets up there and he gets comfortable, I try to lay around him <laughs> instead of just making him move. My wife does not have that level of tolerance. If the dog is on her side of the bed, she just shoves him off. 
So what ends up happening is Yugo has learned that my side of the bed is safe to lay on, but my wife's side of the bed isn't. So instead of sleeping on half the bed like a normal person, I usually end up sleeping on like one eighth of the, <laughs> of the bed because the dog takes up all the space. So I just have to like find some comfy little space on a tiny little sliver of the bed because I don't want to kick him off, man. Why doesn't he get to be comfortable too, you know? Like if I were a dog, I would want to sleep on a nice cozy bed. Our next Reddit post is from Little Calypso Doodles. This isn't really much of an entitled parent, it's more of an entitled pet parent, which I found to be almost worse than regular entitled parents. So I have a barn with plenty of space, so some people board their horses at my barn. Anyway, I was out there one day with my horse and I wanted to ride in the indoor arena because it was super hot out and the dusty outdoor arena didn't sound very pleasant at the time. Besides, there were already some people riding outside. I went in the barn to tack up my horse, and all was going well until one of the boarders approached me. Can you please take your horse outside? My horse is relaxing right now, and he doesn't like other horses. I ask her, what do you mean? I look up and see that her horse is loose in the arena, rolling around in the dirt and whatnot, honestly just being a horse. Well, I rode him earlier, and he needs to relax. Ma'am, the rule board says that horses can't be loose in the barn when there are other riders in the area. There's a round pin for that. We usually use the round pin for warming up horses or for training foals, but it's way too small to ride in, which is why we let people let their horses loose in there. But it's so hot outside and my poor baby can't handle that. Besides, everyone else is riding outside. Well, I don't allow horses to be loose in the indoor arena, so I would like you to either put your horse away or move it to the round pen. I do not make exceptions. Absolutely not! It's 90 degrees outside and my baby can't handle that. Miss, it's just as hot in here as it is out in the shade. Please move your horse. I would like to ride my horse in my barn that I own. Why can't you ride it outside? Then I said to her in the same whiny tone that she used, It's 90 degrees out, my poor baby can't handle that. Then I said, It's my barn, and I would like to ride here while following the rules, so please, if you don't move your horse, I'm going to have to do it for you. I honestly don't know what set her off, but she got all flustered and started ripping the tack off my horse. I pay to ride here, so I can do what I want with my baby. Ma'am, please don't do that. This tack is expensive. Not unless you let my horse relax in here where it's cool. I love horses as much as anybody, but it's just a horse, and they don't care if they're inside or outside, so please move your horse. No, it's too hot out there. It's abuse. It's abuse. It is too hot. You have to take your horse outside now. I pay to be here so I can do what I want. At this point, I am really pissed off. So I retack my horse, tie her up outside, grab a halter, and go in to take her horse out of the barn. She was super mad and she tried to hit me, but there were other people in there who were just finished riding. Help! This lady is taking my horse! Another boarder said, She owns the place. She's not taking your horse. I could hear your banter from outside. The other boarders kept her back while I moved her horse back to its stall. I handed her a rules pamphlet, and I told her that I expected her to have found a new barn by the end of the month. I honestly don't care that I lost a client. She was a B-word, and I don't want that environment at my barn. Down in the comments, people are talking about how crazy horse people are, and we have this story from Black Swan. Dude, I could tell you plenty of stories from when my mom and I boarded our horses. The politics in the barn were just disgusting. Multiple people were hooking up and cheating on their partners. One guy left his girlfriend for a lady at the barn, dated her for 15 years or something, and married her, I think. Then he got busted with a girl half his age, also from the barn. He divorced the other lady and married the younger one. I don't get it, because he was a sexist pig, not good looking at all, and a lazy butthole. But they were fighting over him like crazy. Our next Reddit post is from Australian Shepherds. So, I'm 20 years old, and I moved out of my parents' house two years ago, and I live in a house with two roommates. I am completely independent from my parents. I pay my own rent on my house, I have my own medical insurance, I own my own car, and I pay my own car insurance. I don't even have to ask mommy and daddy for grocery money. Both of my roommates and I each have our own pets. We have three dogs and a cat among the three of us. We've had some conflict about the animals. 
I've been visiting my parents for about a month, so I've been keeping up pretty steady contact with my roommates through text. My mom started asking about what I was talking about with my roommates. She knows about the conflict, and I just described the conversation to get her on the same page. Apparently, that wasn't good enough. She asked to see the text between my roommates and I. She also asked to see my text from a few nights before, and then she picked apart every word and made me feel terrible. So, I said no. I told her that she shouldn't have to see her 20-year-old daughter's text to feel secure, and that I was setting a boundary and I would not be showing her my text anymore. At this point, she started calling me immature, ungrateful, and secretive. I've been working remote while visiting, and I was on the clock during this conversation, so I just walked back to my desk. <laughs> my mom went up to her room, slammed the door, and started screaming at my dad, She's a child! She's an immature child! Over and over again. <laughs> That's funny, OP, because stomping up to your room, slamming the door, and then screaming while the person that you're mad at is just busy doing work is like the most childlike thing that I've ever read. Alright, so this reminds me of a story. When I was, okay, keep in mind that I'm a millennial, so I'm a little bit older than probably most of my audience. And when I was a kid, the internet was kind of like young and new and people were still trying to figure things out and... AOL Instant Messenger was like the main way that people communicated online. And also keep in mind, this was back during the era of like, never share your true name on the internet because the internet is filled with predators and murderers. And if you ever meet someone from online, they're guaranteed to like wear your skin as a suit. And so I wanted to sign up for an AOL Instant Messenger account. But since I was a kid, my mom was like, okay, I'll sign up for you because I need to know what your account is and I'm gonna set it up for you because the internet is so dangerous. Anyways, um, I had to come up with a username and I don't remember what my username was. So let's just say it was YouTuber for sake of argument. So my mom is like, what's your username? And I say, let's try YouTuber. And she types it in and that name was already chosen. So my mom was like, okay, well, maybe we could add a number at the end. Do you wanna try that? And me being some <laughs> like, I don't know, 10, 13 year old boy or something, I was like, Heh -heh, I know what I'll do. Let's try YouTuber69. And, <laughs> and I thought I was being sly and clever, but my mom was like, nope, try another one. And then I, <laughs> and then I had this crushing moment where I was like, wait, my mom knows what 69 is? Oh my God. So I picked another number and we signed up with a different screen name, but <laughs> that moment really unlocked knowledge that my 11 year old brain was not prepared to handle. Our next Reddit post is from That's Nice, I Don't Care. I'm a 19-year-old girl. My brother and my sister-in-law, who are both 32, moved back to my parents' home last week. They have four kids, aged 1, 3, 4, and 6. So, of course, what was a peaceful house has turned into a chaotic mess, like a literal pigsty. On Friday, my brother asked me what my day-to-day -day schedule was like so they could get a better idea of how babysitting would work. Obviously, I said WTF because I never agreed to babysit for anyone. I sat there dumbfounded and asked him to elaborate. Apparently, my dad offered to help them with childcare by using me. Despite me having classes to attend both in person and online, plus I work part time, and no one cared to check with me to see if any of this was okay, lol. I flat out said no, I was not babysitting Monday through Friday and they would have to find some other solution. This upsets my sister-in-law, and she starts complaining that I act like I don't love my nieces and nephews because I'm not willing to help them out and take care of them. Again, WTF? My dad started complaining and told my mom to make me agree with them. I just got up and finished my dinner in my room because I was not about to deal with them guilt tripping me. Later, my brother approached me and showed me what was basically a weekly schedule that had the hours they worked and the hours that I was expected to look after their kids. To spare you the boring details, I would be on duty from 6am to 1pm, and then again from 6pm to 8pm because they wanted special time. Again, I shut that down and told my brother that he was out of luck because I was not doing it. My sister-in-law told my dad that I still won't do it, so he came in and started calling me selfish and lazy. And he said that I'd have to come around to it eventually because they're going to be living here for a while. 
Let me add that my dad doesn't even work, but my mom does. My dad sits on his butt all day watching TV, and when my mom gets home, he doesn't even speak to her until he wants to know what's for dinner. Ah, I was wondering why your father was so deeply invested in you caring for these kids, OP. My assumption while reading this story was that your father just loved your brother more, which uh, is not super uncommon, unfortunately, because a lot of fathers bond with their sons more than their daughters, so I thought it was just good old-fashioned sexism. But nope, it's just hypocrisy and laziness. Down in the comments, I love this contribution from Leighton's. I assume you drew up a schedule of your father's availability for babysitting and gave it back to them. And then OP replies, The ironic part is they don't even trust him to take care of the two oldest ones. My dad can barely make a sandwich. That was our slash entitled parents, and if you like this content, check out my Patreon where I publish extra episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.